In this video, you will look at the ways oil spills occur on board and how to respond effectively when they happen. Throughout, you will be asked to pause the video and reflect on what you have seen and heard. Ideally, you should watch this with at least two of your colleagues so that you can engage in group discussion. The consequences of an oil spill can be disastrous so it's essential you know how to respond so that you can avoid a pollution incident. But before we look at this, you must first understand how spills occur. They commonly happen during cargo or bunkering operations. Just a pinhole leak in a pipe can cause a small amount of oil to seep out and easily worsen. With oil under pressure, even a small split will cause the oil to spray out very quickly, possibly in all directions, though the effects of the spill will vary depending on the type of cargo or fuel oil. Similarly, oil can spill from a flange joint with a poor seal. From a flexible pipe with oil in it, when it is disconnected and there is no end cap or closing device to stop it from flowing out. Or from improperly drained shore hoses or loading arms when they are disconnected from the manifold. There have also been cases where bunker barges have blown air through hoses that have been disconnected. Valves on a cargo or bunker line can also cause leakages whilst oil is being pumped. On some ships, if a deck fill discharge valve is opened without a connecting hose or blank fitted, it is likely to leak out if there is oil in the line. Tanks can also leak because they are overfilled. This is often caused by human error, but it could also be caused by an airlock in the vent pipe, which can happen if the vent line is common with the fill line. Overflows are likely to occur in cargo tanks, fuel or lubricating oil storage tanks, or daily service tanks for the engine. The overflow will generally be via one of the vents that are on the vessel's main deck. But there could be a vent higher up on one of the vessel's accommodation decks. The list and trim of the vessel dictates where the oil on deck flows. With a stern trim, the oil will move towards the stern. With a list, the oil runs to the low side. It could also be that lubricating or hydraulic oil is bunkered in drums. Leakages will occur if they are incorrectly slung and crushed. If the drum bottom is corroded, or if the drum is pierced by contact with the vessel's structure whilst being loaded. There can also be leaks from the hoses or pumps that are used to transfer the oil into a vessel's storage tank. On a tanker, oil spills can occur in all the places mentioned. But oil can also be spilled from vapor locks that are used to connect a eulage or temperature interface gauge if left open, mast risers during tank purging, and high velocity vents. There can also be spills from a PV valve when a tank is overfilled and pressurized, gooseneck vents that are open to the atmosphere, and crude oil washing lines and machines that are under high pressure. Despite everyone's best efforts, oil spills can still occur, so it's essential you know how to contain oil when it happens. When spilt from a deck connection, it can be contained in one of two ways. The first of these is a fixed save all, where the oil will stay as long as the plug is in the drain. If there is a drain line, it's important that the save all is kept clean and free of debris that could block a fitted mesh filter. Alternatively, a temporary container could be used. It's common to have an empty drum located at the fill point, which acts as a save all to catch drips and prevent them from ending up on deck. However, in the event of a major spill, such as a pipe rupturing, oil will spray out. A save all may capture some oil but a lot will be on the deck, where it is free to flow wherever gravity takes it. 
If the spill cannot be contained, it will end up in the water and a pollution incident will have occurred, which is much more serious than an oil spill. The vessel's spill combing is there to contain oil on deck, but if the scupper plugs are not in place and tight enough, it will drain into the surrounding water. With the scupper plugs in place and a spill combing on the shear strake, a large volume of oil can accumulate on deck. If there is too much to be contained, or if it is allowed to accumulate, it will eventually overflow the spill combing and run down the vessel's side. Other ways of containing oil on board a vessel include portable air pumps, recovery containers, squeegees, mops and scoops, and absorbent material to soak up the spill, which can be powder, granular or in matte form. When there is oil on deck, it's important you proceed with great care, as oil is very slippery and can be trampled all over. You should avoid walking in any pools of oil and never attempt to run anywhere near the spill, especially if oil is on your footwear. There are many grades of oil, but all are toxic if ingested. So you should avoid breathing vapor or getting oil on your skin, as it absorbs into the bloodstream. Once in the bloodstream, the effects vary in severity. But it's not only the product that can cause vapor to be inhaled. Any absorbent material soaked in crude oil, such as clothing, can give off hydrogen sulfide gas, possibly in dangerous quantities. If you or someone around you has been exposed to an oil product, you should remember that all cargoes or fuel oils have material safety data sheets associated with them. These contain information on safety, toxic effects, and what to do if someone is exposed to the product. They also inform you on how to clean up the product after a spill. Another possible risk is fire. Although bunker oil has no significant risk, a spill of volatile crude oil could result in a cloud of ignitable vapor being given off. If there is an oil spill on your vessel, always wear the correct oil spill PPE, which should be readily available from the oil spill inventory. Due to the nature of the oil spill response, equipment will be taken out in a hurry and there will be a lot of dust raised, so you should always wear a dust mask to protect your airways. When mopping up a small spill, Standard coveralls and PPE is sufficient. But in the case of a larger spill, or if you are likely to get dripped on, chemical-proof clothing should be worn. Ideally, you will wear boots with oil-resistant soles. However, if there is a lot of oil, you will require chemical-resistant boots that can be cleaned later. These are often more slippery than working boots. Chemical goggles should be worn to keep oil and vapor out of the eyes. And you should wear non-absorbent, chemical-resistant vinyl gloves that can be disposed of or cleaned later. If someone does get oil on their skin, you should immediately remove the excess with an absorbent material. And then proceed to a wash facility, where you should remove traces of oil using fresh water and soap. If any swelling or redness persists, seek medical attention. Likewise, if someone gets oil in their eye, flush the eye with fresh water or use an eye wash. Rest the eye for at least 30 minutes. If it has swollen or the person has blurred vision or redness, seek medical attention. You may also require protection for your respiratory system but this depends on the concentration and type of oil vapor present. As lubricating oil is not very volatile, it doesn't give off large amounts of vapor. But crude oil is a complex mixture of chemical constituents, some of which are very volatile and will immediately fill the air above the oil with vapor. For this type of oil, respiratory protection is always required. 
and air quality needs to be monitored during a cleanup. A filter respirator, either half or a full face mask, may be sufficient if the vapour concentration is relatively low. A vessel is supplied with the correct filters for the products it carries. And you should check the material safety data sheet to identify the type required. If there is a large amount of hydrogen sulphide present, you should use a breathing system. When an oil spill happens on board a vessel, you need to act fast to prevent it from becoming a pollution incident. Your first priority is to raise the alarm, either by pressing the alarm button or by reporting the spill to the duty officer, the barge master or the terminal operator. If the spill is immediately hazardous to people, they should evacuate the area. And if it is an emergency, don't hesitate to press the emergency pump stop button to stop the flow. The spilled oil should be contained as much as possible and it should be monitored to see where it is moving and the quantity of oil. The cleanup should be started using squeegees and absorbent mats, material or sawdust. In addition to everything you've just seen, there are other immediate actions required on a tanker, including opening the relevant spill valve if fitted, opening the relevant drain valves at the manifold, and setting up a portable air pump to transfer contained oil to a depressurized cargo tank or other space, as directed by the officer in charge. The tanks should also be depressurized, if possible, by opening a mast riser. The officer in charge may ask a crew member to open the relevant one. If the alarm is raised whilst transferring oil, the duty officer or the attending rating should stop the flow by either informing the shore team or stopping the onboard pumps. The crew should then muster and some will start to drain lines, shut valves and open drains in an attempt to remove oil from the area. Other crew members should assist, bringing items from the oil spill equipment's locker. The important thing is to contain the oil on board. With the deck camber or a list, oil naturally runs to a vessel's side which is why the deck scuppers should already be plugged. The trim, and whether the vessel is hogged or sagged, will also dictate where spilled oil will end up. Use the oil spill equipment, such as a salvage pump, scoop or bucket, to transfer oil into a container. And divert the oil flow away from areas where it could go overboard. Once the spill is cleared, any items that have been contaminated with oil should be cleaned for future use and returned to their place of storage. And any items used to absorb oil should be bagged and kept in a safe place until they can be disposed of properly. This can be achieved by removal to a shore facility or by onboard incineration or stored in a safe place, such as the SOPEP yellow box. There is certain specialized oil spill equipment that you must learn to use before cleaning up an oil spill. Though, you should remember that a fire hose should never be used to assist with an oil spill cleanup. When an air-driven pump is connected to a vessel's airline, it is able to transfer oil from savals or containment areas into safe containers. The pump must be earthed to stop a static discharge that may cause an explosion or fire. The air pump is portable to allow it to be taken to the location of the spilled oil or where the oil is likely to accumulate if flowing. There may be a proper support fitted on a vessel for it or it can be freestanding. 
don't place it too close to the deck's edge, as the exhaust may contain an oil mist that can appear in the water alongside the vessel. Sand or sawdust is very useful when bagged, as it can be used to make a dam, either to create a pool of oil or to form a channel to direct oil away from overboard discharges. If there is only a relatively small amount of oil, loose sand will stop the flow when spread over it. Sand will also help prevent slips, as it affords more grip on an oily deck. But oil-soaked sand is more difficult to dispose of and has limited effectiveness. Loose sawdust and wood fiber granules are very good absorbers of oil and can be incinerated after use. They should not be stored for long periods as they can spontaneously combust. There are also synthetic materials, either in granular or matte forms, which absorb oil. These are often made of polypropylene as this will not absorb water. Squeegees are used to gather oil lying in patches together for collection with a scoop, mop and bucket. Paper and rags allow surfaces to be wiped clean after a large amount of oil is first recovered using other means and gas oil or kerosene is useful to clean up whatever remains of a heavy oil spill. As chemical dispersant or cleaner can damage the environment and have health risks associated with them, you will be directed when to use them by the vessel's management. They are part of a larger response to a pollution incident, which is much more than the vessel's own response to a spill.